Hello everyone. Let us discuss about a geometry which confuses many students when asked for the bounded atoms whether they take up equatorial position or axial position. Let me give you an example of such a molecule. Supposing that I give PCL3 F2, where do the fluorines go or where do the chlorines go? Is there any set guideline for it? First of all, we need to understand. And PCL3 F2 belong to trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Here I have drawn the polyhedra. Each of this circle is considered to be a vertice. Altogether, there are five vertices or five coordinates. The same thing I am drawing it in a normal model so that you can understand the central atom and the surrounding atoms. These three are equatorial bonds and these two are axial bonds. Well, if I very carefully look at the fluorines or the chlorines, where exactly do they go? We need to understand about the hybridization and also how the orbitals are distributed. For trigonal bipyramidal geometry, the hybridization is sp3d where dz square orbital is involved. Now this sp3d, I am just classifying it into two different sets of orbitals. One set is pz and dz square, the another set is s, px and py. So when the orbitals are classified into two different sets, one is of pz and dz square which is along the z axis, conventional z axis is thought to be this one, x and y. If you can imagine x, y and z. Now as per the conventional z axis, pz and dz square are along this axis. Later on px, py and s orbital which is a spherical shape is present with this particular set. When these five orbitals are broken into two different sets, one important thing that we can find is S orbital is with Px and Py whereas it is absent in the case of Pz and Dz square. This is theoretical explanation so that we can very easily understand the concept. Since there is no participation of S orbital, the overlapping will be less. Whenever there is a participation of S along with P, the overlapping efficiency will be higher. Also the energy difference between a P and D would be larger when I compare it with the S and P. So the energy difference would be small, the energy difference would be large. So overlapping efficiency of these orbitals decrease, overlapping efficiency of these orbitals increase. They become poor hybrid orbital whereas this become rich hybrid orbital with respect to overlapping. The same can also be seen in the table. I have concluded all the points with respect to these sets of orbitals. Whenever pz and dz square are combining, their overlapping efficiency will drop and these are along the z axis. So pz and dz square are along the z axis. Since these are the hybrid orbitals whose overlapping efficiency is smaller, now whatever incoming atom that is adding as a ligand, that would either choose an axial or the equatorial hybrid orbital. Which one would choose which one means, suppose if I am putting a fluorine and chlorine, fluorine is more electronegative. Since fluorine is more electronegative that would definitely choose an axial orbital, it is just because the axial orbitals are formed due to pz and dz square combination where the s participation is very very less. Whenever s participation is more, electronegativity of that particular hybrid orbital will increase. So the electronegativity of equatorial orbital is larger whereas the electronegativity of the axial hybrid orbitals is smaller. Since S character is less, the incoming atom, whoever is having a larger electronegativity will try to choose the axial hybrid orbital but not the equatorial hybrid orbital. So a lesser electronegative hybrid orbital is choosing a greater electronegative atom. Since the overlapping efficiency is very less, the bond that is formed will be weak, weaker bond will be longer. Now in this case there is a participation of S orbital in the hybridization. Therefore these hybrid orbitals will have a larger overlapping efficiency. Since S character is also higher, they have a greater electronegativity. Since they have greater electronegativity, now whenever two atoms are coming of less and greater electronegativity, 
this is already having a greater electronegativity and that would choose a lesser electronegativity atom. The choosing will be in such a way that the electronegativity difference between the central atom and the bonded atom will be less. Whereas in this case the electronegativity difference between the central atom and the bonded atom will be more. When the electronegativity difference is less, this will acquire a greater covalent character. When the electronegativity difference is more, this particular bond will acquire lesser covalent character. Or on the other hand you may say a greater ionic character. So this will have less covalent character. Whereas the equatorial bond will have more covalent character and this more covalency is due to the participation of S, contribution of S and this one is due to a greater contribution from P. So P character is more in this case, S character is more in this case. I am not denying the fact that there are two P orbitals but just for a comparison there is a S contribution for this but there is no S contribution or on the other hand I can say there is a P contribution for it. Now once you have understood the concept let us take down the points now. Since the overlapping efficiency of the axial orbitals is weaker therefore the bonds are longer, longer bonds are weaker. So we got one important point. Whenever I choose a trigonal bipyramidal geometry the axial bonds will be longer. So for this reason we draw trigonal bi bipyramidal it is longer along the z axis. It should not be compressed, it should be elongated along the z axis. I will also show you the model. This is a trigonal bipyramidal model. Whenever you hold a trigonal bipyramidal model, you can just look at the length. This one is larger when I compare it with this width. This is just because the pz and dz square are weaker, therefore they become longer. Axial bonds are longer because they are weaker. Equatorial bonds are shorter because they are stronger. The hybrid orbitals or the orbitals that involve in, in the hybridization for the axial bonds would be pz and dz square, theoretical explanation. In this case s, px and py, s is spherical. So you, you might be thinking even s must participate along the z axis. There will be a little contribution but for our theoretical explanation we say there is no s contribution. There will be but it will be very less. So the same point has been given here. Less s character is present whereas in this case there is a more s character. Since S character contribution is less, less electronegative hybrid orbitals are formed, contrary more electronegative hybrid orbitals are formed. Less electronegative hybrid orbitals with less S character therefore overlapping is weak, in this case overlapping will be strong. Since there is less S character, covalency is also found to be less and since covalency is less, more electronegative bonded atom will come and bind to the axial ligands. In this case less electronegative bonded atom will come and bind to the equatorial hybrid orbitals. Well, this is to one level. At another level, supposing it is not about the electronegativity of the incoming atom, I am just asking you whether multiple bond or a lone pair if it is chosen. I have taken some molecule, within that molecule say ClF3 or some other molecule, where do the multiple bond go or where do the lone pair go? For easy understanding you can look the bond angle between the equatorial ligands would be 120 degree. But the bond angle between the axial ligand and the equatorial ligand would be 90 degree. So the steric repulsions will be higher for axial equatorial combination whereas the steric repulsion will be less for equatorial equatorial combination. For this reason whenever a lone pair or a multiple bond let it be a double bond or a triple bond whenever it is possible in a given molecule, their first preference is to go towards the equatorial position. So let there be one lone pair, two lone pair or three lone pair for trigonal bipyramidal geometry, all of these would first choose the equatorial position. The remaining atoms, the bonded atoms would choose the axial position. Electronegative atom will choose, the more electronegative atom will choose the axial position. That is also given by Bent's, it is popularly called as Bent's rule. What does Bent's rule say is a more electronegative atom will choose that bond that has less S character. More electronegative atom, bond, more electronegative atom will choose that hybrid orbital that has less S character. So within axial and equatorial 
axial has a less s character therefore more electronegative atom would selectively go towards axial position now pcl3 f2 where do fluorine go means fluorine is more electronegative so fluorine will take up axial position and chlorine will take up equatorial position at advanced level benzol is also put in a different way these are more covalent character right so wherever s contribution is present there is a greater covalency in that bond and wherever less s character is present there is a lesser covalency or more ionicity in that bond and more electronegative atom would choose that particular hybrid orbital that is the advanced form of benz rule so this is all about trigonal bipyramidal geometry and where do the more electronegative atom go where do the lone pairs or the multiple bond go and you can just take a screenshot of this table thank you